Okay, awesome. We are live. Hello, friends, and welcome to Family Equality's extra special, extra exciting music and story time with our friend Lynn's Amir of Queer Kid Stuff. Um, we will put all their info everywhere, all over the screen in the comments, um, so stay tuned. Um, we know that there are a lot of events happening on your computer screen right now, like this one right here. Um, we actually host a bunch of events like this all week for you, for your parents, for your brothers and sisters, you name it, we've got it. Um, so for more information on all of the programming that we are offering, um, you can check out all the links that I'm going to put everywhere or just visit familyequality.org slash neighborhood. But do that after the live stream. Watch the live stream first. <laughs> um, now that all of that is over, um, I would like to just formally introduce our friend, Linz. Linz hosts a web series for kids just like you. It is called Queer Kids Stuff. And um, they've also started a new family podcast called Activist View. Um, so after this event is over, go check out all the links that we're going to be putting everywhere um, so you don't miss any of the really, really cool stuff that Linz is putting out. I know they're also hosting a bunch of live streams on their own channels. So this could become like a daily story time for you and your family. And with that, I'm just going to hand it off to Linz, who's a professional, and we'll take it away. <laughs> Cool. Thanks for that. Hello, everyone. Good afternoon. Good morning. Whatever time zone you're in. Um, ooh, that was a weird chord. There we go. Um, hi, everyone. I'm Linz from Queer Kid Stuff. Um, we're going to be doing some songs, some stories. We'll do a little craft. If you happen to have any yarn at home, we're going to be finger knitting later. Um, I'm going to read a book called Made by Rafi. And uh, we're just going to sing some songs and have a good time on uh, this. It's a little dreary out for me today, but <laughs> this this uh, this Tuesday. All right, let's get started. It's okay to be gay. We are different in many ways. Doesn't matter if you're a boy, girl, or somewhere in between. We all are part of one big family. Gay means happy. Here at Queer Kids Stuff. There we go. Uh, that's the theme song to the web series um, called Queer Kids Stuff, where I do LGBTQ plus and social justice videos for kids and families. Um, those are all on YouTube or at QueerKidsStuff.com. Um, cool. So the song that I usually do next, I usually do a little bit of audience engagement, but that is um, sort of difficult in uh, these virtual spaces. So we're just going to pretend that we're going to be engaging with each other for this song. So before I start this song, there's a word in my web series that's kind of like a funny word. It's called queer. So we're going to sing about what queer means, but we're also going to sing about something that is one of my favorite things, and that is my favorite mythical creature. And I'm wondering if anyone out there has favorite mythical creatures. If you've got a favorite mythical creature, shout it out in the comments. I believe there's a live comment section. I have never used StreamYard before, so we're uh, dealing with a slightly new platform for me today. But yeah, if you um, have access to the live comments, please let me know what your favorite mythical creature is. I would love to hear it. My favorite mythical creature is a unicorn. Um, so I think that unicorns are pretty cool and they're pretty queer. And if we're gonna talk about unicorns, especially in this song, we also have to talk about what kind of animal unicorns are like. So what is that? What do you think? Could it maybe be a horse? Yeah, so I think that's a horse. And what sound do horses make? You on the other side of the screen have to do this with me. We're gonna neigh all together on three. So one, two, three, neigh. I think mine is like not that great, but you probably did a much better job neighing than I did. So in this song, I'm gonna need your help and I'm gonna need you to neigh when I point at you. So we're gonna practice. Neigh! That sort of worked. Um, cool, so hopefully everyone got that. And we're gonna sing about unicorns. Horses with horns are called unicorns. Some other horses shout, neigh! Very good. Cause unicorns stand out, but unicorns never fear. When horses call them queer, cause queer means different. Queer means 
means different and being different is what makes you you and me and even you queer means different queer means different sing along queer means different queer means different queer means different queer means different to be different is so much fun there we go that's our little song about unicorns so something uh we talk about a lot on the web series is this idea oh hello from san diego hello um something we talk about on the web series a lot and we talk about and and come into contact with in our daily lives uh is something called gender so i don't know if anyone out there has a definition for gender but it has to do with how we identify and how we express ourselves so something i like to talk about when i talk about gender is pronouns so if anyone on the other side of the screen has an idea what a pronoun is just shout it out put it in the comments but typically, we'll see pronouns like she and her, he and him, and they and them. I use they, them pronouns, and there are also a lot of other pronouns out there. So I've got a little song where we talk about gender and pronouns. You can check out more songs and videos like that at QueerKidStuff.com or on the YouTube channel, Queer Kid Stuff. Thank you for putting that in the lower third. Um, how fancy is this streaming platform? Okay, so we're gonna do a quick little craft project. Um, if anyone has yarn at home um, or any kind of like string, um, we're gonna do a little finger knitting because this has to do with the story that I'm gonna tell you right after slash during the craft. Um, Okay, so if you have yarn at home, I've got this kind of like cool colored yarn. I just, my mom knits a lot, so I've uh, stolen a couple balls of yarn from her over the years. I don't personally knit, but I, I do it when I do this little craft. So find your end, wherever that may be. It's going to be, this is a great time for you all to be getting your yarn ready. So we're going to be finger knitting. So this is a super, super easy way. Um, to knit like a little baby sweater um, or scarf. We're not going to do sweaters. That is way more advanced than I'm capable of. We're gonna be doing little scarves. <laughs> That's what I meant. Um, this is really fun. So um, it, for young children, they might not have the uh, motor skills to do this by themselves. So this is just like a really fun activity that you could do together maybe. Okay, so you're gonna start with your hand like this facing your face like that. Um, and we're gonna take the little end of our string and we're gonna put it between and hold it right there with our thumb. And then what we're gonna do, we're just gonna go in between each finger just like that. And then when we get to the pinky, we're gonna go around the pinky and we're gonna go back, right back, back, back over our hand. So it should look like this in the end. All right. And now because this is kind of our first go around, you're actually gonna to wanna to tuck, you, you might have like a little bitty end there. 
So you're gonna wanna like tuck that in in like a little, a little baby knot. Just tuck that in right there. Cool, so now you've got that going right there. Wonderful. So what we're gonna wanna do is take our string again. Oh, this is, your pair uses they. Oh, that's awesome, just like me. Okay, cool, so we're gonna, what we're gonna do, oop, oh no, came untied. Okay, this is an interesting craft to demo on live stream. Also, figuring out my directions is interesting. Okay, um, all right, so we're gonna go back around our fingers again, and when we get to the pinky, we're gonna go back around. So we just wanna be making kind of like these crisscrosses. All right, so it should look like that. So you should have double. All right, so here's the fun part. You're gonna wanna take the bottom of each one of these, and you're gonna wanna pull it over that first loop. Okay, so I'm gonna do it again. The bottom loop, you're gonna stick your finger through it. Oh man, this is weird. I like, I like how my finger's going through that and back. So you want this first loop to go all the way over your finger. And that first loop over the finger and there we go. So now you should have like a little baby scarf starting to form. And if it doesn't, that's okay. We're just figuring this out as it goes and we're just having a little bit of fun. All right, so, and then to keep making it, all you gotta do is keep doing that. So now you're gonna have, you're gonna be kind of working with the front of your hand. And so you're gonna be taking this and you're gonna be doing what we've been doing, going through your fingers and way back on the way back. And then, so you're always gonna kind of have these two loops and you always wanna take the bottom loop over the top loop, bottom loop over the top loop, bottom loop over the top loop, bottom loop over the top loop. What's great if you're doing with this here with your young child who maybe doesn't have the fine motor skills to do this themselves, if you want to help them doing this part and doing this part maybe on your hands and have them help you while they're, and that's just like a nice way to do this together. Or have them hold it on their hands and you do the kind of fine motor skills part of that. And then you should start having like a little baby thing coming out of there. It, it, it starts to look a little bit more normal once you get more. All right, so there you go, that's the craft. You can keep finger knitting while you're watching me do this. I'm gonna take this off so, of my fingers so that I can tell you all a story. But um, so this is a picture book called Made by Rafi by Craig Pomeranz and Margaret Chamberlain. So yeah, keep going with your finger knitting and maybe you'll have a scarf by the end of the, <laughs> by the, end of the book. All right. So Rafi loves, whoop, loves to knit. There we go. All right. So well enough at the beginning of the book. All right, all of these were made by Rafi. All right. Okay, let's be right there. Rafi lived with his mom and his dad and his dog, Skip. He liked giving mom and dad great big hugs and he could run nearly as fast as Skip. But Rafi also asked a lot of questions. I was a question kid too, always asking what. What, why, how? Why did he feel different from the other children at school? Was it because he was the smallest in his class or because his hair was longer than the other boys? Could it be because he liked wearing bright colors? Maybe everyone feels different, Rafi thought to himself. The other kids were always tumbling about, throwing things and yelling at each other, but Rafi didn't like noise and rough play. So at playtime, Rafi often liked to sit by himself or find a teacher to stand with, just for a little peace and quiet. One day, it was even noisier than usual in the playground. Rafi looked for a quiet spot and saw Miss Fernandez. What are you doing? He asked. I'm knitting a scarf for my sister. She replied, smiling. That's beautiful, said Rafi. Is it hard to do? It just takes practice and patience, said Miss Fernandez. Do you want me to show you? Yes, please, said Rafi. 
So Miss Fernandez put the needles into Rafi's hands. First, the wool tickled. Then he got it all tangled. Rafi was upset. It's really frustrating when yarn tangles, right? But Miss Fernandez said, don't worry, Rafi. You didn't hurt the scarf. To fix it, you just unknit the st stitches and start again. It's called tanking. That's knit backwards. They both laughed and she helped Rafi untangle the wool. Then he tried again. At the, and this time it worked. He was knitting and he loved it. But Rafi couldn't wait to tell mom and dad about knitting. He ran home from the bus stop and burst into the kitchen. Miss Fernandez showed me how to knit and it was really easy, he told them. Can we get some needles and wool? Please. At the wool shop, there were so many beautiful colors of wool. When Rafi looked for red, he found crimson, magenta, and lots of other colors. And it was the same with the shades of green and blue. There was jade and emerald and turquoise and aqua. What are your favorite colors out there? Put them in the comments. Rafi loved all of the colors and the names. Then he had a great idea. He grabbed one of each color. It would be so cool to make a scarf for dad's birthday with all the colors of the rainbow. Soon, Rafi was knitting everywhere. In his bed, in the bathroom, at breakfast, even on the school bus. It was a long way to school and some of the children teased him and it didn't help that dad's scarf grew to four meters long. This is kind of a British book, so they talk in meters, but four meters is really long. It's a really long scarf. And it trailed all down the aisle of the bus. Ruby almost tripped over it and all the children laughed. But Rafi just wrapped the scarf around his neck three times and kept on knitting. That night at bedtime, Rafi had some more questions for mom. Mom, am I strange or weird? Why do I like to sing and draw and knit? Do you think I'm girly? No, Rafi, I think you are very Rafi. Why is something going on at school? It's just that the boys at school talk about football all the time and mom, is there such a thing as a Tom girl? Tom girl, Rafi, you are our wonderful boy with your own special interests. Dad and I are very proud of you. Okay, can I finish knitting Dad's scarf? Mom, yes, Roth. I love you. I love you too, darling. Good night. And Rafi snuggled down in his bed and went to sleep. Next day at school, something happened that changed everything. Mrs. O'Donnell said the class was going to put on a play. Barry would be the prince and Ruby would be a princess. Rafi put up his hand. Miss, he called out. If Barry's a prince, won't he need a royal cape? That would be nice, Rafi, said Mrs. O'Donnell. But we don't have a lot of time. Let's learn our lines and see if we can perform the play on Friday. That's only four days away. After school, Rafi couldn't wait to get home. He asked mom if she would help him find some old sheets or tablecloths. They found some yellow cotton fabric and a beautiful piece of purple velvet. Rafi took it all up to his room, and this is what he did. Are you ready? He took a chair and draped the fabric over it. He then took some pins and pinned the fabric together. It was purple on one side and yellow on the other. And it made an elegant velvet cape with a beautiful yellow lining. Now Rafi just had to sew it together. He sewed around the cape as best he could, then he folded the velvet over twice at the top to make a collar. Finally, Rafi sewed the collar to the cape and threaded a ribbon through the hole in the collar with a safety pin. Then he pulled the ends of the ribbon and the cloak gathered up. Look at that, isn't that cool? Later that evening, mom and dad got a big surprise. There was Rafi peeping around the door with a huge grin on his face. Madame, sir, announced Rafi. Ta-da! This is a royal cape for the prince to wear in the school play. Rafi's mom and dad looked at the cape in amazement. 
The collar stood tall and the cape swished and it truly was a cape fit for a prince. Next morning, Rafi stuffed the cape in his knitting bag and ran to the bus. What you got there? Jerry asked, sniggering. Hey, Raph, your bag got fat, Ruby shouted. It's almost as big as Jerry, snorted Barry. That, al that almost started a fight. Not very nice. But Rafi just held tight to his bag. At school, he ran to Mrs. O'Donnell. Please, miss, I have something for you. Mrs. O'Donnell opened the bag slowly. A cape, she exclaimed. Did you really make this, Rafi? It's amazing. All of a sudden, everyone wanted to look. What is it? Let me see. Wait a minute, said Barry, pushing in. I'm the prince, and he grabbed the cape and put it on. Then Rafi explained to everyone how he had found the fabric at home and sewed it all by himself. All the children crowded around Rafi excitedly. No one was teasing him now. I bet he'll be a famous designer one day. He said he was going to make me a dress. I bet he could make something for me. Look what Rafi did. He's my friend, he's cool. Rafi listened happily to all the chatter. Hmm, he thought, maybe I could be a famous designer one day. On dad's birthday, Rafi gave him the long rainbow colored scarf and dad loved it. And on Rafi's birthday, mom made labels for Rafi to use on all his finished knitting and sewing projects made by Rafi, look at all the cool things he made. There's a hat and a sweater and some socks and some cool jumpers. A few weeks later, while Rafi was sitting in the playground knitting as usual, Barry's ball came rolling past. Rafi picked it up and tossed it back to him. Are you making something for another school play? Asked Barry coming over. No, Rafi said, this is for my mom's birthday. Barry started to walk away. Then he looked back at Rafi. Cool, he said, and went back to his game. Rafi smiled and went on with his knitting. And that's it. The end. Made by Rafi. By Craig Pomeranz. Wonderful little book. Um, I hope you all have been working on your scarves just like Rafi. Um, cool. So we're going to get back to doing some songs. All right. <laughs> All right, so um, this next song oh, is a little different. Um, so we are going to be talking about something that's like kind of a big, oh, thank you for the claps. Um, it's kind of a big concept, but I think that we can get it. Um, it is about a concept called privilege. And bear with me, grownups. I, I, promise, I promise I can make this accessible for kids. Um, so... What I usually ask when I do this song is what your favorite thing to do in the playground is. So I, I think back when I was a kid and I loved going down the slide. I loved the seesaw. That was always really cool. I also loved to climb a lot. That was definitely one of my favorite things. But one of the things that I always wished I could do better. Oh, and the swings. I forgot about the swings. The swings were definitely my favorite. Um, but one thing that I found kind of hard was the monkey bars. Um, because isn't it like kind of difficult, especially when you're small, to do the monkey bars? And then when people who are tall are trying to do the monkey bars, it's a little bit easier. Right, so we're gonna talk a little bit about how privilege is kind of like trying to get on the monkey bars.
can change what privilege is. There we go. Cool. It's just like a nice little song about privilege. Um, cool. I figured I might do a song that I don't typically do at performances, um, but I'm excited to bring it to live stream. Um, I don't do it because it's kind of a hard song, um, but that's okay. I can do it for all of you here. Um, I figured since we're doing this for the neighborhood and family equality, it made sense to do a song about family. So that's what this next one is about. time for a dance party. So um, all you folks at home, uh, I'm going to sing a familiar song. If you know the words or know the song, please join in. Um, but yeah, we're going to have a little fun. We're going to dance to this one. Oh, the top of the song. There we go. Make sure I'm at the right place. Well, okay. Got it, got it, got it, got it, got it, got it. I think I'm in the right place. Okay, we're gonna go there. I don't know why it keeps moving. All right, we're ready now. Are you dancing? Very important. Oh, 
that song um okay so i'm just gonna tell a little story and we're gonna wrap up um i hope you all have wonderful fingers finger knit scarves by now um okay so i want to talk a little bit about pride so pride is a very very important time for the lgbtq plus community you probably know it you have probably gone to a pride parade already pride is one of my favorite times of the year and I used to live in New York. I grew up in Brooklyn, New York. And big city where the LGBTQ plus movement started. So every year, what we loved to do when we lived there was go to the beach for pride. So what are some things you take to the beach? You have to take your sunscreen, your towels, your umbrella. What else? We have to make sure we've got sunglasses on. Sometimes I'll bring my ukulele. Um, what else do we have to take to the beach? Shovels, definitely to make sand castles and to dig in the sand. We got to bring snacks, cannot forget our snacks. And all the other things we take to the beach with us. So just think about all those cool things you take to the beach. And so a couple years ago, I'm gonna tell you this story. My partner and I, we got a babysitter for our dog and we put all of our things for the beach into our bags and we got them onto our backs and we went out the door and we got into a car and we started to drive to the beach. Do, 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 do. Just drive to the beach. Do, 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 do. And we finally get there and we're so excited because it's pride and we're, we're at our favorite place and we're coming and we're going to celebrate just being part of this beautiful community. And we step out of the car, we get our bags on and we look up at the sky and it was kind of disappointing. Why do you think it was disappointing? I'll tell you. It was cloudy. Now, what kind of weather do you want when you're at the beach? Do you want it to be cloudy? I don't think so. But, you know, we looked up at the sky and, and it wasn't very sunny. It wasn't, it was getting a little chilly. And we said, you know what? It doesn't matter because we're gonna have a great time anyways because it's pride and we're here with our friends and we're gonna have an awesome time anyways. So, you know what, we took our bags and we go onto the beach anyways and we put our towels down, we put on, we put on sweatshirts because it was a little chilly because it wasn't very sunny out. And we get our towels out, we put on our sunscreen even though it's cloudy because it's still very important. We get our snacks out, we put our umbrella up and we lie back and we have a nice time. And we decide to go up and go to the water and see what that's like. And I'm standing there, I'm standing at the water, looking out at the beautiful ocean, a little cloudy still, but you know, when I feel something. Right on my nose. It was a drop of rain and it starts pouring down. It starts pouring rain on the beach. So we all go and huddle in our umbrella. My dog didn't like that. Georgia, come here. Come here. You can tell the story with me. And so it's pouring rain down at the beach, and we hide under our umbrella, and we decide with our group of friends that we're going to take all of our umbrellas together, and gonna, we're going to make one super umbrella. So we gather under the super umbrella, and we can cuddle up all next to each other, nice and warm, and we eat our snacks. Very important to eat your snacks. And I check outside and see if it's still raining. It's hot still pouring and I check we wait a couple more minutes and eat our snacks very yummy and we check outside is it still raining <sighs> this is disappointing it's pride and some people start running away from the beach everyone's not happy with the weather really not happy so we're sitting there we're gonna wait it out we're eating our snacks and then we look out okay the rain's starting to go away it's only a couple Couple of little drops go on my face and I check out the other way. Only just a couple little drops. So we start getting out from under the umbrella. And we put it down and we see everyone kind of coming out from their umbrellas on the beach and the sky starts to clear and the whole beach erupts into applause, applauding the sky for clearing up for us and the rain stops. And guess what comes out? A rainbow. That's my little pride story. <sighs> right? It's like a nice little 
I'm gonna ground ourselves. I'm gonna do this song, please sing along. I'm sure you know the words. You are my sunshine, my only sunshine. You make me happy when skies are gray. You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my sunshine away. for joining me today. I'm doing these live streams every Tuesday afternoon for me on the East Coast at one o'clock and I will leave 10 a.m. on the West Coast. I think that's how time works. What is time anymore? Um, thank you so much for joining. I'm also doing weekly live streams Wednesday mornings at 10 a.m. on my Instagram account. That's at Queer Kid Stuff at Queer Kid Stuff on Instagram. So you can check that out. That'll be tomorrow morning, a little early for the West Coast folks, but it stays up in my story throughout the day. Um, so be sure to check that out. I also host a podcast called Activist You, where I interview kid and youth activists. Um, so yeah, please check that out. Um, that's wherever you get your podcasts. Um, yeah, and uh, visit QueerKidStuff.com, check out the videos, check out the music um, for the web series. And uh, if you are able to support me in any way in the work that I do, um, you can Venmo me. Um, that's just kind of like a little virtual tip jar, Lindsay Dash Amer. Um, Lindsay with an A. Oh, thank you for putting that in the lower third. Um, I'm going to be coming out with some really good, like really cool, cool announcements for projects I've been working on soon um, that are going to directly benefit LGBTQ plus families. So please stay tuned for that. Um, I've got some really cool stuff coming out. I can't talk about it yet, but um, soon I will be able to, and it should be coming out in the next uh, couple weeks. So definitely follow me. Um, make sure to stay tuned for all of that. Um, I'm really, really excited about these projects that are coming up. So definitely, um, you're going to want to be in on that. Um, but yeah, I think those are all the announcements. Um, I'm, so I'm doing the live stream tomorrow on my, on my Instagram, but I'm also doing a Facebook live live stream with, um, a children's musician named Mills Trills. And we're going to be doing like a impromptu songwriting session. Um, so learn a little bit about the process behind the music. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'll, I'll, uh, Hand, hand the reins back to whoever's, yeah. Hello, hi Tristan. Oh my gosh, that was so hi. much fun. Leo, did you like that? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did some dancing, we did some singing oh, along. Wonderful, love to hear Amazing. it. Yes, thank you so much. Gotcha. And, and truly, 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 please Bye. send a tip to Lynn's and Queer Kids stuff. Um, and if you want to support family equality and the work we're doing in the neighborhood, please go to family equality and make a donation there yes, as we do that. this work up and running. I we have a really amazing week ahead of us. Um, it includes a special reading um, by one of my favorite authors, no, Andrew like Solomon. Um, and, uh, and that's going to be really special as well as our trans parents meetup and our, uh, 
uh, parents of color meet up uh, and parents of kids with special needs. And we have so many amazing things happening this week. So please go to our website and check it out. Thank you all so much for being with us. Thank you to Queer Kids Stuff for, for spending time with us again. This of course. Uh, make sure you tune in back next week as well. And uh, have a great rest of your week, everyone. Bye-bye. Bye, everyone. Thank you so much. Bye. See you next week. <laughs>